Hi friends, welcome to another video on Tutorials Point with me Racha. And today under this aviation module segment, we will talk about in-flight communication system. Well, in-flight communication system is a very important module for the simple reason or fact that there has to be continuous communication not only inside the aircraft but also by the aircraft, you know, inside the aircraft crew as well as on ground staff, baggage handling staff as well as uh, engineering staff. So it has to have complete communication and that's why our aircraft is completely ready to take off when the communication system is clear and effective between all the different departments working in aviation. So let's see what is on the agenda today. Well, today we're going to talk about airline reservation system, which is your ARS, baggage handling system, BHS, customer relationship system, which is your CRS, fair court system, flight information display system, which is FIDS, new distribution capability, NDC, passenger name record, which is PNR, passenger service system, that is PSS, Revenue Management System which is RMS and Safety Management System which is SMS. Well, we are going to talk about all of these in detail. So, let's see. The first and foremost is in-flight rather the airline and information technology. Now, airline and IT work very similar or very close together because a lot of things in the aviation is with the help of a software. So it's important that IT and aviation is very closely linked together. Let's see, we have departure system. Under departure system, we have departure control system, gate control, as well as the flight dispatch. Under airline reservation system, we have schedules and availability, fare codes and rules, passenger information, as well as ticketing for these passengers. Under decision support system, we have fleet management, we have schedule optimization, revenue management and flight operation system. Under marketing and CRM systems, we have direct bookings, loyalty program and customer service. Under travel intermediaries, we have traditional agents and OTAs, travel management companies as well as tour operators as well as wholesalers. Under global distribution system we have availability schedules etc pricing that is the fare codes as well as the rules on these fares distribution which has booking and ticketing coming to travelers we have business traveler as well as leisure travelers we have groups traveling together or individuals traveling together and we have the frequent flyer program under in-flight technologies we have entertainment we have communication within the flight people and crew support system. Well, friends, this is an overview of what we will talk about today. So it gives you a complete glimpse about the different communication which happens between different departments in aviation. Talking about airline reservation system, which is ARS. Now, this is having everything to do with the flight scheduling, the availability of the flight, the dispatching of the flight. So it has everything related with fair codes and the rules. Now fares are decided a prehand for each and every airline, for each and every destination that it flies to. So there are certain fair codes and uh, the rules regarding those fares. Some of the fares are refundable and some are non-refundable fares. And who decides that? Well, the airline decides that at a very macro level. Passenger information is always uh, given out with regards to this reservation system. Passenger needs to mention about his information with regards to his details on ID card, etc. Electronic ticketing, we have uh, e-tickets, which is the new thing nowadays, thanks to the digitalization, which is happening all over the country. So we have e-tickets as well as boarding pass, which you can remove online for yourself. Coming to fleet management, well, friends, Different airlines have different fleet of aircrafts. They can be Boeing, they can be Airbuses or even ATRs. So with regards to fleet management, there is a system with regards to how this happens. So fleet management system has three basic criteria. Fleet acquisition. The people at the head of the airline, the COO and the CEO decides which kind of aircrafts or which kind of fleet you want to acquire for your particular airline. The fleet or the aircraft are assigned for particular routes you have Airbus, for particular other routes you have Boeing or for shorter distances you have ATRs. So once you get 
acquired the fleets, you also assigned the fleets for different destinations and different routes. And the fleet needs to be maintained. Of course, aircraft require a lot of maintenance and hence for that reason, fleet need to be maintained. Coming to flight scheduling systems, well, schedules are very important in the flight because passengers rely on these schedules whenever they need to plan a particular travel. So if they are looking at morning flights or late evening flights, the schedules of the flights are there given to the passengers on the websites of these particular airlines. Looking at them, they have to be strategic goals, which is decided, route network, the airline decide which route it wants to operate on and which routes they do not want to operate on, depending on the profitability of that particular route. Passenger demand, that is again one of the criteria which leads to scheduling of the flights because there are certain sectors which are, for example, metro cities like Mumbai, Delhi, Bangalore, etc. These are metro cities which have high demand of passengers on these particular routes because these are commercial capitals or business cities. Well, coming to the aircraft type, most of the time for shorter distances, the aircraft which is known as ATRs are used. If a flight distance is less than 30 minutes or 45 minutes, ATRs are used. For longer distances, Airbuses as well as Boeings are used. The human resource factor is very important. Environmental regulations because of different weather conditions, etc. The environmental regulations are also taken into account. Airport restrictions. There are different aircrafts or rather airports all over the country which are military airports only. For those airports, there are certain restrictions which the airline needs to follow in terms of they cannot have very early morning flight or they cannot have very late evening flight. So the airline needs to really take care of these airport restrictions. Contingency planning in terms of any emergency happens, they need to have acquired certain contingency planning as well as certain safety regulations which each and every airline needs to take into account. For example, Delhi being the capital of the country, there are a lot of safety regulations whenever you're flying over Delhi uh, because of the political scenarios there. So hence the airline needs to keep in mind all of these factors when they are doing flight scheduling systems. Well, next talking about the departure control system or the C DCS. Well, in this particular segment, we'll talk about check-in. So whenever there's a departure, there's a particular route which needs to happen or there's a particular protocol which needs to be followed. So we have the check-in, the first thing, after which boarding passes are allotted to the particular passenger. Seat allocation, which is done depending on what seat the passenger wants, he's allocated that particular seat. You can also select your seats online before each and every flight. So the airline nowadays give a lot of options to the passenger in case of seat allocation. You have your checked in baggage which needs to have a particular weight. So you cannot carry more than 20 kgs per passenger if it is domestic and not more than 30 kgs in case it's an international airline. So passenger needs to keep that in mind. There is a load control which happens in the aircraft. Passenger needs to identify themselves with the help of their ID card and that is checked at the airport counter. There can be uh, passengers who are denied boarding. There are various factors uh, for being denied boarding. Uh, if a crew member or the airport staff feels that the passenger is highly under an alcoholic stage or is taking drugs, etc., they can definitely deny him boarding because other passengers' lives can be at risk because of such a passenger. No shows and standby passengers. At times, a passenger might have checked in, but he doesn't show up at the, you know, at the gate where aircraft you take in the passenger into the airline. So that can be a no-show or a standby passenger. And there could be different interline connections for different uh, longer routes of flights. Coming to in-flight technologies, here we're going to discuss about two of them. One is for the passenger and one is for the crew. Well, the passengers have the in-flight entertainment system through which they can watch a lot of movies, music, videos, etc., whatever they feel like they have certain channels subscribed. So that is a very entertaining factor for the passengers, which is the IFE system, the in-flight entertainment system. They also have information on the geographic information system, meaning a passenger sitting on the airline can also in fact 
see the location on the map, how much time to destination and they can actually locate with the help of GPS where exactly they are in right now and communication systems meaning if the passenger needs anything he can always press the call bell and call the air hostesses for any particular work they might have. They might need tea, coffee, food or any other thing that they might require. For the crew, there are certain uh, in-flight technologies helpful like tablets. Tablets are given to in-flight crew for the simple reason that they might have a lot of work in flight and they need to feed in a lot of data with regards to the passengers. Navigation and communication and flight logs is um, again uh, something given to the air hostesses and point of sale devices. A lot of passengers are sold goods on board the aircraft by the crew and for that particular reason point of sale or ATM or debit cards and credit cards are used by flight attendants to take money from the passengers. Well, uh, there are different stages that the passenger has to have in his journey when he comes into the airport right till the takeoff time. So let's look at what these different journeys for a passengers are. There is a pre-arrival wherein he comes, uh, he is supposed to report at least two hours before a flight. So he pre-checks in or pre-arrives. After which he does a check-in at the airport, there is a airport staff or a ground staff at the reservation system wherein they help the passenger check in in case he has not checked in himself before. After he does his check-in, he has to go through a security. So there is a complete security check or a frisking of the person who's traveling. So uh, he needs to, the passenger needs to frisk himself, rather the security guard will frisk him as well as whatever carry-on baggage, if he's carrying a laptop or if a lady is carrying a purse, it has to be put through a security check to ensure that there is no dangerous good which is being carried by that particular passenger. Once the security check is completed, he goes through a pre-boarding age or a pre-boarding stage wherein he has to wait for his particular name to be announced. Boarding happens and uh, that is the time when all the passengers board the aircraft. If in case there is a stopover or a transit flight, the passenger needs to remain seated in that particular aircraft during a transit and he should not get out of the aircraft. And final destination, there is an arrival for the passenger wherein he takes his belongings and he disembarks or arrives at the destination of his choice. Well, talking about different check-in options, we have come in the age of digitalization which was not there a decade back wherein you had to do manual check-in. Nowadays, there are different options for check-in. You can do an online check-in on the website of that particular airline. You can also have self-service kiosks. These kiosks are there inside the airport area and you can check, self check in. Auto check in using geofencing as well as smartphones. You can use your smartphones for check in and there are definitely physical uh, check in counters located at the airport. Well, certain key steps in security scanning, uh, as we mentioned a little while ago, uh, they have to confirm the traveler identity. Uh, traveler identity is given, mean he needs to show his personal identification card and there's an x-ray baggage screening and anything which is not supposed to be there is taken out and there is a body screening which happens for each and every passenger. Well, uh, certain pre-boarding technologies, passengers, there's a flight information display system which shows that which gate he has to go to for his particular flight or what time the flight will start boarding, etc. There are free Wi-Fi hotspots in the airport where he can use Wi-Fi. There are recharge stations uh, in case he wants to charge his mobile phone or smartphone, he can do that. And there are different mobile apps which are available for a passenger at the airport area. Well, looking at the pre-boarding technologies at the airports, you have business intelligence tool. You also have point of sale or pause systems as well as certain alerts and notification which are sent to a passenger through an SMS. So an uh, airline will always show um, you know, different SMSs or share certain SMSs for the passenger. At the arrival, uh, aircraft has certain options given to the particular passenger. So you have immigration databases. If you are traveling out of the country, you are given a particular form to fill in during the flight to make best use of the time. The e-transports are, passports are given, 
scanners and cameras are put in everywhere so uh, this is just for security purposes that scanners are there and cameras are there and passenger needs to identify himself again whenever there is an immigration or a transit involved. Well, coming to baggage and cargo handling, you might wonder that where does your baggage go once you check it in? Well, it goes to the cargo of the aircraft and there are different people who are handling your baggage and cargo. So once you get out of the flight and you move towards the particular welcome airport that you have gone into, your baggage is put in by the baggage handling people or cargo handling people onto a conveyor belt and they uh, push this through the conveyor belt and it comes into the conveyor belt of the particular airport where you have landed. Well, certain safety and security systems, you have communication system, which is very, very important uh, into the aviation industry, navigation systems, which are used by the pilots, surveillance system, again, used by the security staff, flight and weather information system used very, very coercively by the pilots and co-pilots with the help of the air traffic controller or the ATC. Environmental management system, you have certain technological applications. You have environmental monitoring, energy use, noise reduction, carbon emission reduction, as well as water quality. Well, friends, that brings us to a conclusion on this particular module on in-flight communication system. We have discussed so many different departments. We sincerely hope you have enjoyed listening to us as much as we have enjoyed teaching you this particular module. Keep watching more videos coming up your way. Thank you for watching and listening to us.